Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. We are going on a culinary adventure to Southeast Asia in the country of Vietnam. In today's video, we are looking at one of my favorite Vietnamese dishes that just happens to be the national dish of Vietnam. And yes, I'm talking about pho. If you've never heard of this delicious soup, now is the time to tell you the correct pronunciation is pho. There are different styles of pho, but it typically consists of broth, rice, noodles, herbs, and thinly sliced meats, usually beef, but sometimes chicken, shrimp, or tofu. For me, the toppings are what make this soup so special and include green onions, chili peppers, cilantro, lime, bean sprouts, and Thai basil. Sauces such as sriracha, oisin sauce, fish sauce, and chili oil are used to finesse the soup to one's own liking. To get an idea of the different types of pho, I looked at the menu from a highly rated local restaurant near me. This restaurant uses the thin rice noodles and they feature a 48 hour bone broth, which I'm sure has a ton of depth. One of the delights about pho is the complexity of the broth. And for their garnishes, they have white onions, scallions, cilantro, and basil. Their beef offerings include short rib, beef belly, and rib bones that look like they have been braised for four hours. Also filet mignon, and they have a shrimp pho, and also a tofu option with broccoli, carrots, napa cabbage, and enoki mushroom. Just hearing all of these meats doesn't sound like this is a great budget meal, but I do assure you it is. They use a small amount of the thin slices of meat, so it works out well. And I did stop by H Mart just to see what they have in store for the thin sliced meats. I remembered seeing them in there before, and I was really surprised with how, I mean, just ready everything was, and the price as well. So I found these large containers of thin cut ribeye rolls they would be perfect because the containers are like 10 bucks but you can keep them in the freezer and just a few slices for each bowl of pho makes it a really inexpensive meal they've got all kinds of meats here so they also had chicken they had brisket and they had pork I mean, it's definitely worth looking at if you haven't been to an H Mart or any other Asian market for that matter. It's just nice to have them pre-cut and ready to go. The idea for this video came about very organically. One day last week, I was searching for something to make for dinner. It had recently been hot, so I picked up some fresh mint and bean sprouts at the grocery store thinking that I would make spring rolls, which are another one of my favorite Vietnamese dishes. You may have seen this video that I made last summer. But the night I wanted to make myself something for dinner, it actually had cooled down outside and I didn't want to eat anything cold. I wanted actually to have something hot when I realized that I had everything that I needed for pho. So I was super excited about that. All I needed was the rice noodles, the broth, and then this mint, the bean sprouts. Maybe I would throw in a few extra items in there and I had everything that I needed. A few weeks ago, I was in the store and I was eyeing these king oyster mushrooms, which I've never had before. And the last time I was in there, they were on sale. So I figured it was a good time to try them. Now, as I'm watching this video back, I'm realizing that the food doesn't look that great, but 
you know what this was food i literally just pulled out of my fridge and was trying to make something to eat for dinner it's just real life so i do apologize it doesn't look that great but i did want to show you that i used this kind of that's the flying horse rice noodles now the first time i tried these i cooked these with some tofu and with some broth and i wasn't making pho that night but i made them and i overcooked them and so i thought that they weren't going to be that great for a soup dish. Maybe it wasn't the right kind of noodle or whatever, but I did decide to try it again for this meal and it actually turned out really awesome. So I'm going to keep using it. I just obviously didn't know how to cook them. You just want to make sure you're not overcooking them. Now for the tofu, I did bake this and get it nice and chewy. And then I'm just going to chop it and throw it into the broth. But I always lately have been making that up on the weekend to make sure that I always have these patties that are nice and chewy so that during the week, if I want to throw them in a stir fry or I want to throw them in a soup, uh, they're ready. And then I also cut up the mushrooms and some broccoli. And I'm going to go ahead and start with some water. And I'm using the Better Than Bullion base. And one of the nice things about this is you just add a teaspoon to water and it seasons your broth for soups, for noodle dishes, it, pretty much anything that you can think of. And I like the fact that it comes in a variety of uh, flavors. They do have chicken, beef, vegetable, uh, which is what I'm using, roasted garlic, sauteed onions. They also have organic options and low sodium as well, which I'm definitely going to pick up the next time I'm at the store. I didn't realize that they had low sodium options, which is nice because these broths or bullions, you always have to watch on the sodium content. But if you're a meat eater and you want to do a classic flavored pho, you can definitely pick up the beef flavor along with some thinly sliced beef. Or alternatively, you could slice it yourself or chicken as well. Um, you could just thin slice it and make your own soup. But I do love having this on hand because it makes throwing together a weeknight meal so easy. Because if you already have the noodles and you've got a protein, uh, you know, you can use whatever vegetables you've got on hand. A while back, one of my Chinese viewers told me about a soup that they like to eat quite often that includes tofu, broth, noodles, and curry. And she mentioned that when I had picked up the deep fried tofu, which was extra chewy, and I had been wondering, does she mean, which kind of curry was she talking about? I have no idea. You know, they have Japanese curries, they've got the regular curries that we buy in the American stores. Um, you know, they're all a little different, but, uh, so when you guys give me recipes that you want me to try, definitely give me some detailed instructions. Otherwise I might be left wondering. So anyway, I thought about her when I was making this and the vegetable bouillon on its own tastes a little, I don't know, it lacks a depth of flavor. I don't know how else to say it. So I decided to go ahead and try adding a little bit of the curry that I have in my pantry and I'm using the one that I showed right there and I'm just mixing a little bit because I don't want to ruin the entire broth if I don't like the way it tastes so I thought I would give that a shot It took me a while to learn how to get these noodles right because they do 
cook kind of quickly so I wanted them to be a little al dente when I brought them out of the pan because obviously when you add the hot liquid in they're going to continue to cook so I didn't want them to be mushy and you know I just wasn't going to like that texture so here are the toppings that I'm going to add I've got broccoli I've got the chopped oyster mushroom and I'm going to go ahead and add my tofu. And I, I prefer my broccoli to be a little bit crispy. So I'm just going to cook this really quick and then pull it off the stove. I have to say I owe my viewer a debt of gratitude because curry in this soup really hits the spot. This is so delicious. If you've never tried curry in the soups like this, it's just amazing. You know, the vegetable bouillon on its own just kind of tasted a little bit flat. And man, when I added in the curry, it just really hit the right note. I also have this umami, mushroom umami from Trader Joe's, which I think I'm going to try next time, adding just a little bit. But I just cannot tell you how delicious this broth is and how amazing the flavor. Now I am going to go ahead and add my toppings, which are one of my favorite parts of pho because I really love the textural differences of the crunchy bean sprouts along with the mint. And in this case, the curry added a little bit of spice. So the mint on top just really helped balance each bite of the soup and it was so so delicious a lot of times they use a squeeze of lime they use sliced jalapenos thai basil here we do have the heat from the curry so i think that the sliced jalapeno in this case would be a little bit of overkill I this was so delicious actually here here I made a little sample for my son and he thought it was really good as well this was so good that I made it twice during the week and as you can see my bowl got a little bit bigger and I made it the same way but this time I added some carrots just for some extra nutrition and variety and I also Decided to top mine this time with a little bit of the chili garlic paste that I love so much. But thinking back, it actually already has enough heat from the curry. So I think that that was a little bit overkill and made it a little too spicy. Uh, so it's, it's nice when it has the perfect balance. That's it, guys. I do love this dish so much, and I hope that you will try it at home. It's nice to have these one-pot dishes that are very inexpensive to make. The only thing that I don't normally have on hand is the bean sprouts and the the mint, but it's, you know, those are both really inexpensive items that are easy to pick up, and it's a super, super delicious soup, so I hope you will give it a try. Let me know if you like this type of video. If so, please give me a like and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you next week.